the country has been confronted by various challenges brought about by the existing health crisis. Despite such, the DNR Calabarzon, along with the EMB4A, MGB4A, and its five PNROs and CNROs, has always been at the forefront of addressing the prevailing, imminent, and pressing environmental issues and concerns in the region to ensure provision of quality service to its clients and stakeholders. Since the previous year, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the region led its compassion projects covering initiatives and efforts responsive to the call of Bayanihan Act. A total of 12,025,739 pesos and 56 centavos was utilized from donations and office funds to procure PPEs, hygiene, and sanitation items and food packs. The DENR Collaboración has also led various initiatives to continuously provide assistance to stakeholders and promote the conservation and proper management of natural resources of the region through the following programs. A total budget of 123,114,000 pesos is allocated for the Enhanced National Greening Program for CY 2021. As of November 2021, the DNR Calabarzon has partnered with a total of 545 families belonging to poor communities for the establishment of 2,416 hectares of NGP plantations throughout the region. A total of 3,944 individual clusters were identified within 1,356.63 hectares of seed production areas region-wide. These seed sources were able to produce 143.92 kilograms of seeds, equivalent to 254,959 seeds, which can be used for reforestation and rehabilitation purposes. From 2011 to 2021, we were able to plant a total of 106,605,480 trees to 132,227 hectares of denuded forest and forest lands, which will contribute in enhancing ecosystem services and aid in reducing poverty among upland and lowland communities and mitigate climate change by expanding forest cover that service harbored sink. The total budget allocated for the Improved Land Management Program is 19,630,000 pesos for CY 2021. A total of 2,785 patents with a total area of 1,103 hectares of land were given to 972 families through patent issuances. These families now have legal rights over their properties, facilitate transactions in land, and promote investment in their land. A factor that increases the efficiency in titling in the region is the effective implementation of inspection, verification, and approval of surveys using land administration and management system. To date, a total of 6,444 survey plans were approved by the office. This therefore creates an impetus for sustainable economic development. The DNR Calabarzon has collected more than 206 million pesos from January to December 2021, which were deposited to the Bureau of Treasury, helping the government in developing and implementing projects for the public. The increasing collection of fees on services provided by DNR under land management, forest management, and protected area is a result of DNR Calabarzon's continuous efforts to amass funds for the public good. The total allocated budget for the intensified force protection and anti-illegal logging operations for CY 2021 is 54,735,000 pesos. 77 individuals from local communities were hired as forest protection officers to monitor and protect the remaining forest and forest lands of Calabarzon, adding a total of 8,500 pesos to their family's monthly income. These FPOs patrolled a total of 8,388 kilometers of forest and forest lands and addressed the threats observed during and after their surveillance. For this year, DNR Calabarzon, through intensified forest protection, have confiscated a total number of 96,340 board feet of major forest products, 1,224 minor forest products, 41 conveyances, and 106 units of chainsaws with a total estimated value of 18,186,947 pesos. A total budget of 52,760,000 pesos is allocated for Enhanced Biodiversity Conservation Program for CY 2021. 
a total of 118 individuals were hired as technical staff for protected area management. They are tasked to conduct survey and registration of protected area occupants within 73 barangays within legislated protected areas of Calabarzon. The objective of this activity is to determine the location, boundaries, extent of development, and occupants of the protected areas. Four protected areas showed increased biodiversity for both flora and fauna based on the results of the biodiversity monitoring system in comparison to their 2020 BMS results. These protected areas are UMRBPL, PPL, HTPL, and MSPL. All other protected areas are expected to improve through the succeeding years of biodiversity conservation program. Three caves namely the San Juan, Marulas, and Tangop Caves were assessed and classified as Class II, which can be utilized for tourism, recreation, and exploration purposes. The caves will be open to experienced cavers, and only trained personnel accredited by the Department of Tourism will be allowed to guide and assist the visitors. Two livelihood projects under the Community-Based Forest Management Program were funded by the DNR Calabarzon, which added another source of income for local communities in Rosario, Batangas, and Tayabas, Quezon. These projects are the establishment of a 15-hectare cacao plantation with cash crops and working animals within the CBFM area in Barangay Nasi, Rosario, Batangas, and the establishment of a 15-hectare agroforestry project with the aquaculture project in Tayabas, Quezon. This project is awarded to the Kalantog Fisher Folks and Farmers Association, Incorporated. The DNR Calabarzon have also supported biodiversity-friendly enterprises which promote the sustainable use of biological resources, create wealth and value, and open opportunities for the equitable sharing of benefits among stakeholders. These are 1. Technical assistance was provided for the enhancement of the people's organization relative to the implementation of the Biodiversity-Friendly Enterprise Project on February 18, 2021 in Barangay Malabrigo, Lobo, Batangas. 2. Technical assistance was provided to samahan ng nakakaisang mamamayan sa pagsulong at pagunlad ng Barangay Sawang to capacitate the PO on the preparation of business plan on Bagong and Tinapa Cubes and Mix last May 11, 2021. 3. Monitoring and extension of technical assistance for the CY 2019 BDFE project, enhancing awareness on the significance of conserving marine ecosystems through the production and marketing of seaweed crackers and chips, by Samahan ng Kababaihang Mangingisda ng Sitio Manuel Uy. 4. Monitoring and extension of technical assistance for the CY 2018 BDFE project, fermented fish product production and processing, by Samahang Mandaragat ng Banoyo in Barangay Banoyo, San Luis, Batangas. 5. Monitoring and extension of technical assistance for the CY 2018 BDFE project, expansion of the existing artificial coral reef for ecotourism enhancement around the Twin Islands in Barangay Balay Tigre, Nasugbu, Batangas by Bukluran ng Maliliit na Mangingisda ng Balay Tigre, Inc. 6. Facilitated training on basic food safety, good manufacturing practices, and basics of product packaging and labeling to the People's Organization of Naik Cavite, Buhay at Kabuhayan sa Nayon. 7. Facilitated training on basic leadership and basic bookkeeping to the Enhanced Mangrove Planters Association, the People's Organization of Noveleta Cavite. 8. Project monitoring and technical assistance in the seaweed production project for the Batangas Seaweed Farmers Association in Calatagan, Batangas. 9. Project monitoring and provided technical assistance in the implementation of the BDFE project with Samahan ng mga Mandaragat sa Sulok Fisher Folks Association in Barangay Lumania, Glian, Batangas. 10. Project monitoring and provided technical assistance in the implementation of the BDFE project with Ang Nakaka Isang Mamamayang Kostan ng Balayan Incorporated in Barangay Palikpikan, Balayan, Batangas. And 11. Provided assistance in the application of the Lian Fisher Folks Association Incorporated for business registration with the DTI in Barangay Lumania, Glian, Batangas. Amidst the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic that has greatly affected the implementation of the BDFE, the enterprise is gradually bouncing back and regaining business momentum with the relaxation by the IATF of the community guideline protocols and alert levels. In the province of Cavite, 
a marine protected area network was established entitled the Entrada de Manila Bay MPAN. This is created under an institutional management system wherein two MPAs, namely the Ternate Marine Park and Corregidor Island Marine Park, will share collective goals and interests, collaborate on management efforts, and share experiences towards MPA management for the greater good of the MPAN. This MPAN aims to address the prevailing problems identified during the problem tree analysis where illegal fishing activities cause depleted fish stocks and pollution which are observed in their coastal waters. In an effort to rehabilitate the Manila Bay, the DNR Calabar Zone has facilitated 11 cleanups on priority rivers and beaches, installed 12 trash traps strategically placed in rivers where they can stop solid waste from floating further downstream, conducted 42 IEC to communities about proper waste management, and established eight eco-gardens to promote waste segregation and increase waste diversion. A total budget of 7,493,000 pesos is allocated for clean air program for CY 2021. The region has three air quality monitoring stations which are located in Antipolo Rizal, Santa Rosa, and Binan Laguna. Based on the monitoring of the EMB, all parameters for these stations are within the National Ambient Air Quality Guideline value as per Republic Act 8749, which indicates healthy air quality in Calabar Zone. Moreover, the EMB Calabar Zone has 2,785 industries region-wide and were able to issue 198 notices of violation for non-compliant firms to the Clean Air Act. EMB Calabar Zone has allotted a total of 69,248,000 pesos for clean water programs in the region. EMB utilizes an area-based approach to effectively manage watersheds through the Water Quality Monitoring Areas or WQMAs. The Calabar Zone has three WQMAs, namely the Imus Langyang Rio Grande Rivers WQMA, the Canas Maalimang Rivers WQMA, and the Ian Dumaka Rivers WQMA. The WQMA's objective is to protect, for stakeholders' collaboration, the water body and its tributaries by keeping their water quality within the water quality guidelines or criteria conforming to the water body's classification or even improve the quality to higher classification. EMB Calabar Zone has also monitored two major rivers such as Kalumpang River and Pansipit River. Per the monitoring, both rivers are yet to pass the Class C classification of water bodies to be used for recreation, fisheries, and farming. The continuous activities for the rehabilitation of these rivers are expected to improve its water quality for the succeeding years. The EMB Calabar Zone has also allotted a total of 14,883,000 pesos for ecological solid waste management for CY 2021. As of November 2021, the Calabar Zone is generating 5,778 tons of solid wastes per day. The proper disposal of wastes produced by each city and municipality is planned through the 10-year solid waste management plans of each LGU. To date, a total of 92 SWMs have already been approved out of the 142 LGUs of Calabar Zone. The MGB Calabar Zone have allocated a total of 23,822,944 pesos for geohazard, groundwater assessment, and responsible mining. To determine hazards within Calabar Zone, the MGB have conducted vulnerability assessments to eight municipalities, such as Rodriguez Rizal, Alitatag Batangas, Balete Batangas, Santa Teresita Batangas, Dolores Quezon, San Pascual Batangas, San Jose Batangas, and Ibaan Batangas. More so, a karst subsidence hazard assessment fieldwork was conducted last November 15 to 29, 2021. With the challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, the region intensified its information, education, and communication campaigns through online platforms. Through continuous promotion of environmental campaigns, the DNR Calabar Zone has widened its reach online with a total of 44,000 followers for the year. As of November 30, 2021, 
The region has actively disseminated information on environmental issues and concerns to the public with 631 press and photo releases, 141 promotional collaterals, and 9 videos of ENR success stories through its website, official Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. The region has also produced quarterly newsletters and conducted 83 radio programs and guestings for greater reach. To strengthen our relations with our constituents, a total of 31 stakeholder management activities were conducted by the region. Under the Tayo Ang Kalikasan program, we have sealed memorandums of agreement with various stakeholders for the adoption of national greening program sites in parts of Cavite, Laguna, Patangas, Rizal, and Quezon. The youth sector, through our 125 Environment and Natural Resources Ambassadors, has also shown their commitment for further protection and conservation of the environment and has served as our young environmental champions in the region. A total of 216 external stakeholders coming from the private sector, non-profit, POs, NGAs, academia, and LGUs were added in our stakeholders list for the year. Despite the hurdles along with the continuing pandemic, the DNR strives to adapt, re-strategize our plans, and deliver results to be responsive to the needs of the people of Calabarzon. While we in DNR do our part, we also rely on your continued commitment for our future programs. After all, ikaw, ako, tayo, ang kalikasan.